Hello everyone, my name is Neda Zuhdi, and I'm director of the Open GovHub, which is a dynamic meeting place in Washington, D.C. that supports a network of over 40 international NGOs who are promoting open government reforms around the world. Our mission is to help increase the impact of open government reformers by helping many different groups share resources and collaborate. And today, I'm here to talk about one way I think we can all bring new stakeholders to engage with the Open Government Partnership, the OGP process. And this is really by leveraging hubs. Why? Basically because, as I'm here to argue today, hubs are really acting like the new public square of the 21st century. So uh, when you look at this first slide and these two images, at first you might not see any similarities between them. So the image on the left represents Athenian democracy in ancient Greece, and the image on the right is a photo from a hackathon which we hosted at OpenGovHub with, uh, in partnership with the city of DC. So even though these photos may look completely different at the outset and are from completely different eras, I'm here to argue that they're actually both accomplishing basically the same thing, and this is acting as a public square. So most fundamentally, a public square is a place where people gather. They gather to learn from each other, to exchange ideas, and to work together in some way. So when we talk about hubs, first of all, what exactly do we mean? Hubs are places. They're physical shared spaces that bring together different communities. And hubs basically come in four different types. The first type of hubs are incubators. These are really focused on supporting startups and entrepreneurs to grow their businesses. The second type of hubs are co-working spaces. These, of course, are shared workspaces, and they especially attract freelancers and other independent workers. The third type of hub, which is probably the single most common, is our hubs with a focus on technology or some other aspect of innovation. And the fourth type of hub is focused on social change. These ones attract social entrepreneurs and civil society organizations or NGOs. And we at the Open Gov Hub are actually a combination of these four different types. But at the end of the day, really all different types of hubs are trying to accomplish three basic things. These are the three C's, as I like to call them. The first is to foster community. So really establishing relationships between different types of people. The second is to foster collaboration and helping people identify ways to work together. And the third is to foster creativity. So really encouraging new ways of solving old problems. So it's really important to realize that hubs are part of a, a growing global trend around the world. Precise statistics are hard to find because people define hubs differently. But even if we just look at the global growth of co-working spaces in recent years, for example, we find that there are over one and a half million people who are members of co-working spaces at over 15,000 spaces around the world. And these are not just in the most developed countries or in big capital cities, but they're really popping up everywhere, as you can see in this map. The most impressive thing, actually, is that the number of hubs has doubled every single year since 2008. So this is clearly a huge global trend that we should all capitalize on to help bring new people to care about and engage with open government and the OGP. So how exactly are hubs acting as this new public square? Basically, it boils down to four things. Uh, so hubs are, again, establishing relationships, especially between people of diverse backgrounds from different sectors, from different walks of life. Second, they're fostering the exchange of different ideas and approaches to addressing issues. Third, hubs are encouraging debate and deliberation. And fourth, hubs are helping people build new skills and find ways to work together. And we all know these four things are really basic ingredients for any successful participatory process. So in this way, hubs are almost acting like these little schools of democracy. So there's clearly huge opportunity for us to leverage hubs, which are where people are already gathering, and bring them into OpenGov efforts. So how exactly can we do all this? Uh, as I said, hubs are these dynamic places for creativity and innovation. 
This means that they naturally attract young people and innovators. And we could all use both of uh, we could all use more of both of these groups, no matter what country we're in. Um, these are too often kind of unusual suspects who are not well represented in OGP or in open government reforms. Um, so let's really think about how hubs can bring these people to the table. Second, hubs can also act as really helpful neutral conveners that are bringing together government on one side with civil society and citizens on the other side and help facilitating them to work together to co-define and co-create what they together see are their country's top open government reforms and priorities. Finally, hubs can also be a great source of expertise, especially on topics like using technology for social change, but in other areas as well. So in conclusion, I want to encourage everyone in this room to, to really think about leveraging hubs. If you're interested in maybe starting your own hub back home even, for example, I'm more than happy to be a resource and talk. But no matter what, uh, when we all go back home after this summit, I really want us each to think about finding where, where are people already gathering back home? Where are the hubs that are already existing and operating? And connect with them so that we can see how together we can work with hubs to bring critical new stakeholders into our open government efforts and into the OGP fold. Thank you.